Hey, what's up YouTube? Mike the Manic Geek here. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the Antec GX1200. This is an ATX mid tower that they've come out with recently. And at $90 MSRP, it sort of fits into a really saturated market right now with a lot of really nice cases that offer you a lot of bang for your buck in terms of both build quality and feature set. So let's dig in a little bit deeper here and see if Antec's formula for this uh, incredibly competitive segment makes sense for you. So we'll start off with the exterior of the case. Uh, we do have a case that is made of steel panels with uh, plastic front and roof panels up top. A uh, bit of a fingerprint magnet for both, but it also cleans off pretty easily, so I wouldn't worry about that so much there. Uh, the look here is really clean and streamlined while also having uh, a tastefully aggressive feel to it. Uh, I really like what they did with the front uh, panel especially, and I really like that there are no five and a quarter inch bays on this case. That's awesome. Now we also see the styling from the front of the case continue really cleanly into the roof line of the case, which also has that same kind of really open uh, mesh that's set up here. And the mesh for the front and the top do have some really nice foam dust filtering in them that does a really good job of keeping dust out of the case. The main problem that I have with them though is that in order to get to them, to clean them, you have to remove the panels to get to them. There's nothing, there's no, there, there's no, yeah, you, you just can't get to them from outside. So in order to clean those, you will have to remove the panels. Depending on how lazy you really are, that may be a huge problem depending on your hardware and living, uh, living space situation, that may be a problem. For me, it's not a really huge deal because these panels do come off very easily, but they also stay on very firmly. The main issue I had with the panels though, is that near each of the accent pieces for the front panel, as well as the vents on the roof here, which are in fact functional by the way, uh, there's this weird line that gets drawn right at the edge of each of those accent pieces, and I kind of feel like that's something to do with the way these panels are, uh, are, are molded together. So I might take a look at how these are being uh, constructed and see if there's a way, Antec, to get rid of these lines for the, for the panels, because apart from those, it actually presents and cleans up extremely well. But once you see it, you, you kind of can't unsee it, and it takes away a lot from what I think is otherwise a very attractive case. Now as far as a window goes, yes, this case does have a side panel window. It does use smoked acrylic, uh, so if you're not illuminating the interior of the case, you might have a hard time seeing the hardware that's inside, uh, especially if you're in a more dimly lit environment, but it does show off a really nice chunk of the interior, uh, even though it doesn't encompass the entirety of the side panel like a lot of the other uh, newer cases that are coming out have with the, with the tempered glass panels and everything. But apart from that, the outside of the case is pretty understated with the only logo being present uh, towards the bottom of the front panel here, and it's not anything that sticks out really glaringly, which I really like in this instance. Front I.O. is also pretty standard here with your typical headphone and mic jack, the power button, which has a nice uh, clicky feel to it. Not sure if you guys can hear that in the mic, probably not, but it's got a nice uh, tactile clicky feel to it, and you've also got two USB 3.0 ports. I might have liked to see at least one additional USB port, even if it was just a USB 2, just to have a little bit more connectivity up front, because I personally really like using my front panel I.O. connectors. Uh, your mileage may vary, of course, and for some of you it might not be a thing at all, but just something to consider. But enough about the outside of the case, let's dig into the inside and see what's going on there. All right, guys, so now that we got her stripped down, uh, we'll notice a couple of things with this case. First of all, uh, the side panels are held in place with thumb screws. Uh, however, they unfortunately are not captive. Uh, again, not really the biggest deal in the world. It's not a make or break affair for me. Now, some of you may have noticed that the roof panel 
is still hanging here. That is unfortunately because the front IO for this case is not connected to the case itself. It is connected to the roof panel. It's not really the biggest deal in the world in this case, however, because the cable routing that you have for these along the roof line here is actually extremely good and it'll allow you to get really clean cable management while still having enough slack in the cables that you can comfortably take off the roof panel for servicing the dust filter that's up there. And looking at the front, we can see the two supplied fans that come with this case. They are Antex new LED fans that have seven different colors that you can select from, as well as a couple of different uh, lighting effect modes that you can use them with. Uh, it's a pretty simple interface that they use to control the fans on their own. It's basically just uh, a soldered in button that hangs from the fan that you uh, click to change through the different lighting modes and what have you. Uh, but the nice thing about them is that once you select the mode for the fan to be in, all you have to do is power down the system and when it turns back on, the fan remembers the mode that you had it set in. So all of your fans will at that point be synchronized with one another. So you don't have to worry about waiting for the proper time to get the lights to, uh, to match up with everything. It's a really nice touch. And once I see a cleaner implementation of it that doesn't have a dangly button hanging from it, I'll be thoroughly impressed with these. I'm also pleased to report that they are extremely quiet. Uh, I would probably rate these with uh, stock fractal design case fans, to be honest with you, in terms of overall airflow and, uh, and quiet operation. Um, definitely, definitely a much nicer fan than what's been supplied in Antec cases that I've taken a look at in the past. So whatever they're doing with these, they need to keep doing with the rest of their case fan lineup because these are actually pretty solid. But apart from two fans being up front, there's actually enough room up here to mount up to 320 millimeter fans, as well as up to a 360 millimeter water cooling radiator. Now, with the amount of space that I'm seeing up front here, you can probably get away with up to a 45 millimeter thick radiator with a single set of fans before you run out of room up front. And we'll start digging into why there's a space issue now. So taking a cleaner look at the interior here, we can see that there is a massive uh, power supply shroud that goes along the bottom of the case here. Uh, it presents really cleanly. I really like the implementation with this one, apart from the fact that it cannot be removed. Uh, that is a little unfortunate, uh, and I'll get into, I'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, but I definitely would have liked to seen this uh, be a removable power supply shroud. It is not a deal breaker, but it does create some build challenges depending on what route you go. However, you might be able to see here that this comes pretty close to the front of the case, so that's really gonna be the biggest limiting factor with how thick a radiator you'll be able to fit inside of here. So just something to consider if you plan on doing a custom water cooling loop inside this case. Now we do have an extremely clean and open layout on the interior of this case uh, with room for up to a single 120 millimeter fan in the rear, uh, room for a standard ATX motherboard. Sorry, I really don't feel like an EATX board should be going in here. You might be able to get away with it width wise, uh, but at that point you're likely going to be covering up most of the cable management openings, so I would stick with a standard ATX motherboard for this enclosure. Now you do also have tons of cable routing holes throughout the entirety of the case, uh, including some accommodations for micro ATX motherboards should you decide to go put one of those in here. But there's no grommets on any of the openings. Do I think that's a particularly big deal? Really, you're only looking at this from a from a why not perspective. Personally, if the case is laid out correctly, you won't need grommets to get a clean build. But it's still something that doesn't really cost a whole lot to add to the case, and it does make it present a lot more cleanly. So that's something I might want to consider uh, adding to this case in the future, Antec. Now moving towards the front of the, power of the power supply shroud area again, we do see that there are some curious holes here near the front uh, above where your hard drive bays sit. And this is so you can mount an additional 120 millimeter fan to help draw air through the front of the shroud over here and up past the hard drives. It's an interesting solution to, uh, to help ensure that your hard drives aren't gonna be getting starved for air depending on the hardware configuration that you have in here. Uh, do I feel like it's necessary? Hmm. 
remains to be seen. I haven't really gotten the chance to play around with that too much because I don't have really a bunch of platter drives that I can shove into one of these bays and sort of like stress test them for a while and see what any temperature differences are. But let me know in the comments below if something like that is, uh, is a video that you'd like to see me follow up with. Now moving towards the front of the motherboard tray area, we do see that there's room for up to two solid state drives or other two and a half inch devices to be mounted up front here. And there are some cable routing holes towards the very front of the case. Here's the problem with them. These holes are much too small to be used to route all of your cables behind the motherboard tray. I mean, even just trying to get a SATA power connector in there for a power uh, for the power supply to power a solid state drive is, is a nightmare. Because once you get the cable through, you don't have enough room to wiggle your SATA cable through and comfortably manage that and still have it come through without breaking off the connector for your solid state drive. So, the best way to use these openings is for one or the other of the cables either just route the SATA data cable through there or just route the, the SATA power connector through there. You can cleanly route the other ones underneath the front of the tray here as long as you can get the cable to sit between the motherboard tray and the inside of the fans right here or in the case of my personal rig in, uh, next to the radiator as well. It can be done and it can be done cleanly without putting any undue stress on your parts. However, if you go that route, know that if you have to change out that part, it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to get everything uh, unplugged from there. So really, I think the best solution for that problem would just be to make the openings a little bit wider, guys. Now let's take a look at the back of the case and see what's going on with the cable management scene here. First thing you'll notice is there's a lot of open space back here and cable tie points for days. If you cannot find a spot to anchor your cables behind this motherboard tray, you're sad. Now they also give you a really ample amount of cable management space back here. So if there's bigger looms of cables that you wanted to bundle together for your build, you're better suited to do that because of all the space that they give you back here. Uh, they also give you an additional two and a half inch drive bay uh, on this cover here but the problem that I have with it is it's not toolless. I have to use a screwdriver to remove this caddy. It, it, I, I don't understand. Every other, every other fastener on this case is, is, is a thumb screw apart from motherboard fasteners. Just give us a thumb screw here, please. Again, at the end of the day, it's not a really big deal but it's just the fact that that's the corner that they chose to cut. It's, it's mostly just inconvenient, honestly. It's, uh, again, not a huge deal, but it's, it's a head scratcher, you know? Now moving on to the hard drive sleds, you do get two of them in this case, so you can hold up to uh, two platter drives or two additional solid state drives over here. And while the sleds aren't anything super exceptional, they're actually not too terrible either. Uh, they slide in and out pretty easily with a nice satisfying click to let you know that, they're, uh, that they've slid back into place. And the tracks for the edges of the sleds actually have uh, rubber dampers on them to make sure that as much of the vibrations from your platter drive spinning are silenced as is possible. Now moving towards the power supply area. Uh, of course, because there is no ventilation above where the power supply mounts here, you will have to orient your fan facing down. And to that end, there is a power supply fan shroud that's accessible from the rear of the case. Pretty typical fare there. There's ample padding for your power supply to mount here, including an additional pad on the inside wall of the shroud itself to make sure that you're not going to be scratching up the sides of either the inside of the shroud or your power supply. But here's where the problem comes in uh, with the shroud not being removable, is that you wind up, you wind up not having not, a, uh, not very much room uh, between the hard drive cage and the front of your power supply. So that's gonna run into, you're gonna run into some problems if you're trying to use a, uh, a modular or semi-modular power supply and you suddenly find yourself needing to plug in or remove cables. Uh, you will unfortunately wind up having to remove the power supply to do that comfortably. 
Now the other problem with that is that there is no uh, bracket at the back where the power supply mounts to slide the power supply out from the rear. Uh, that's something that would have really made the building experience a lot better for this case. Uh, mind you, I didn't really encounter very many issues with my build experience here, but that just would have been that little bit extra to really make this case shine. Speaking of building, you actually get a really nicely packaged set of uh, case accessories for this case. Uh, comes in a nice resealable plastic baggie uh, with individually labeled bags containing all of the fasteners that come with the case. Uh, you get four zip ties and then you get your instruction manual. Uh, the manual is pretty basic fare. Uh, it doesn't go into a lot of detail on any one thing, but it does cover pretty much everything. But this is definitely better packaging for this than what I've seen from Antec cases in recent history. So um, yeah, I definitely like this inclusion. See, these little things make a big difference in the presentation of a product and how someone perceives it. So yeah, I'm, I'm digging this. Now the last thing I want to talk about before I get into my finished build with the case and what it was like to actually build in this thing is this little guy right here. Now this is a control hub that comes with the GX1200 and offers control for up to six pulse width modulated fans in your case, as well as up to three channels of LED lighting. So basically this allows you to control the lighting for both the case fans and the lighting that's uh, sitting in the front panel that illuminates near the bottom of the front of the case at the same time. And this is accessible lighting wise from outside of the case near the front I.O. Um, the problem, there's a couple of problems with this implementation though. The first problem really isn't so much of a problem, but more of a why not kind of thing. Uh, you can control fan speed on this with seven, nine, and 12 volt applications, but the problem is you can't access fan control from outside of the case. Uh, I personally would have liked to have been able to control fan speed as well from outside, given that there may be certain use case scenarios where a user wants their fans running at seven volts for certain applications, and then full speed for other use case scenarios, but they want to control that themselves rather than having the motherboard control that. I get that, and again, I just would have liked to have seen that control accessible from outside. Now the next one's more of an oddity than anything else, uh, because I feel like it will, we'll say oddity and missed opportunity. Now the A logo that is on this hub lights up with the rest of the lighting in your case. So whatever mode your fans and your front panel are set to, this is going to glow as well if they're all connected as one. The issue I have with that, where are you going to see that? <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's one of those things where I feel like if you have a feature like that on a product, you should display it somewhere more prominent than behind the motherboard tray. Now, granted, you could always attempt to just flip it around and mount it on the inside of the case. Uh, that is always an option, but then you run into the issue of where are you going to hide all of those cables for all the fans and LEDs that you're running to this hub if it's displayed on the inside of the case. I think more than anything, this presents an opportunity for a modder to basically just cut in their own side panel window on the rear panel for the case near where this mounts so that you can still show this off from the other side. Or who knows, maybe Antec may see fit to uh, create an additional side panel for this case that maybe already has a factory fit and finish smoked acrylic side panel back there as well so that we can show that off. I don't, I don't know, maybe, may, maybe they'll do that. I, we, can, we can hope. But the last oddity is something that was really a bummer for me. Uh, you do get up to three LED channels to control with this hub. The problem, however, is that they use a proprietary style of connector that I have not seen on anything else. Why didn't they stick to the RGB standard that already exists for RGB lights out there? Or if they knew that this connector type was going to be difficult to reliably source, why not provide us at least with the channel connectors so that we can convert a standard RGB connector into something that will work for this. 
Um, I scoured all of Performance PC's parts catalog, and the very closest I could find to an RGB LED connector that might work for this hub was on a Lian Li uh, LED kit. And even then, those are true RGBs. This is a seven color palette that you get access to, so it's not actually true RGB. So what else is compatible with this to make it that much easier for me to illuminate the inside of my case? I honestly just feel like if you wanted to source additional LED lighting for this, it should be a lot easier a process than what I appear to have gone through. Uh, so that bit's a little disappointing for me. But now you've seen the case, you've heard my initial thoughts, now let's see what a completed system looks like. All right, so as you guys can clearly see here, this system cleaned up so nicely. Admittedly, this is my favorite configuration that I've ever had for this particular computer. Yes, this is still Peace. This is still my own personal computer, but it looked so good now that I had to drop my Colonel Mustang figure in there because this rig is fire. But on a serious note, the cable management, spot on in this. It was so easy to actually build in this system, apart from a couple of cables that I had to swap out for the power supply uh, because of that lack of room between the hard drive cage and front of the power supply. Apart from that though, the system was an absolute blast to build in. Everything just fell into place, super easy to work with. Um, you know, the only actual complaint that I had was for the solid state drive up front um, because of those uh, small cable management holes that are there. Uh, so I had to get a little creative with that one. and That admittedly took a little longer than it should have, but otherwise everything came together extremely smoothly. Uh, no cable mess being exposed from the grommetless cable routing openings, uh, no unnecessarily sharp edges anywhere from a poor finish on the inside of the case, uh, no, no rat's nest of cables anywhere apart from directly in front of the power supply, because in my case I have a semi-modular power supply. But in general, I really like the way this rig cleaned up. And I even installed my own RGB lighting kit inside the case and had it colored match to the ambient lighting for the front and the ambient lighting from the LED fans to sort of give you guys uh, in some of the B-roll here an idea of what this case might look like with uniform lighting in an ideal world. Um, which I think pretty cleanly brings us into the conclusion here. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things going on with this case, right? You have a built-in six port uh, pulse width modulated fan controller. You have two uh, LED fans with interchangeable lighting and color modes. You have uh, ambient lighting for the outside of the case. You have a nice clean ATX mid tower interior with plenty of cable management options and a really nice power supply shroud. All of your hard drives are hidden away with the exception of uh, those that you might mount here uh, in the front. Uh, the build cl displays cleanly, your hardware runs cool. Uh, honestly, I haven't noticed any temperature differences really at all between my old uh, Corsair 760T and this case, and the 760T was a monster of a case by comparison. But then we run into uh, a couple of oddities with, with things like uh, not quite enough radiator clearance in the roof, but almost, it's, it's like right there. Honestly, I feel like if they had just offset the fans in the roof by a couple of centimeters, that probably would have fixed the problem and we wouldn't have had any clearance issues with radiators in the roof. Uh, there's also the oddity of the lack of compatibility with LED kits to expand upon the LED control that this hub has to offer, as well as limited functionality for fan speed uh, without having to remove the side panel in order to get to it. But really, apart from those minor gripes, I really, I don't have much of anything negative to say about this case. Now as to whether or not this is worth the $90 asking price, I feel like a lot of that's gonna come down to the eye of the beholder, to be honest with you, because frankly, for what it is you're getting here, you, are, you really are getting quite a bit for your money. Um, 
but there's a couple of limitations that you're dealing with because you're dealing with an ATX mid-tower and you're dealing with some features that admittedly are still a little half-baked in the execution. But at the end of the day, it's still a well-built, clean-showing case that has lots of nice features to offer to, a, to any system builder out there, and it is guaranteed to give you a really striking looking rig with near effortless cable management. So it's definitely one to consider. But let me know what you guys think of this case down in the comments below. Have any of you built a system in a GX1200 or know someone that's built a system in one? If so, I'd love to see some pictures of the builds that you guys had together. Also, what are some recommendations that you might want to give to Antec for some things that you spotted that you might want to see a little bit different? Leave some comments down below. I'm sure Antec would love to hear what you guys have to say. But as always, guys, don't forget to do the thumbs up, thumbs down thing like you do, how you do, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, YouTube.